à tous. Good evening, everybody. Bienvenue au Symposium Seul Vivant Montréal. Ça fait vraiment un grand plaisir de vous voir tous réunis ici ce soir. Euh, C'est un moment très attendu. On sait qu'il y a des gens qui sont venus de loin aussi. On a des gens dans l'assistance qui sont venus aussi loin que de Hong Kong. Donc, euh, merci du fond du cœur d'avoir fait tout ce trajet pour vous joindre à nous. Euh, et maintenant, tel que j'ai indiqué, nous sommes fiers d'avoir un événement bilingue et euh, bon, dans l'esprit d'accueil de, de, des, des nombreux visiteurs de l'étranger, je m'apprête euh, à changer pour l'anglais pour le reste de mon discours. Donc, je vous invite à poser votre oreillette si nécessaire. Folks, what if I was to tell you that the way we've been approaching environmental activism was flawed? And I mean, I'm sure many of you have thought about this before, since who really likes to be told what not to do? And who hasn't felt completely hopeless when hearing the way environmental issues are communicated to us? But now, what if that conversation changed? What, what, what if we were to start communicating a positive message based on solutions and started advocating for the world that we want, as opposed to focusing on what we don't want? Well, the regeneration of soil health embodies that change of narrative because it's not only a crucial part of the solution when it comes to addressing climate change, but it's also something that has countless other positive impacts by revitalizing our ecosystems, our economy, our social structures, and health. I'd like to say also that soils are a humble reminder that for far too long we've been seeing ourselves as separate from nature which has caused many of today's global issues. But now living soils are offering us an opportunity to reintegrate our culture and our economy into the ecological web of life. So welcome to the Living Soil Symposium Montreal, an event focused on solutions and direct, direct action. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> since I'm sure many of you are aware and familiar with the topic, but assuming some of you aren't, why are we dedicating a whole event to this? Well, simply put, soils are the most valuable ecosystem on Earth. Whether indirectly or directly, we all rely on soils for the countless ecosystem services it provides, whether that be growing our foods, our materials for clothing, or for construction, or filtering our water, regulating floods, and even regulating our climate. So really, all of those functions that are quite essential. Soils are all, also the largest terrestrial, oh sorry, I'm a little bit in advance. There are also um, incredible pools of biodiversity. So we call them the poor man's rainforest, since they're so rich in different life forms. Uh, in only one handful of soil, there are more organisms than there are humans on Earth. It's a really rich, hidden world of wonders. And the magical thing is that all of those essential functions that soils provide are made possible thanks to these organisms that inhabit them, so the living part of soils. Soils are also the largest terrestrial carbon sink, um, and with about 2.7 trillion tons of carbon. Um, but now, human activity has caused heavy degradation of soils worldwide. So at this time, we say there's about one-third of the total land area that's degraded, according to the UNCCD. A recent study found that since the beginnings of agriculture, we've lost about 133 billion tons of carbon from our soils. And so the, well, yeah, to, to stay on this thought, so the result of this, that, of, of this is that, um, that carbon largely gets emitted into the atmosphere as CO2, and scientists now know that this has been a major contributor to climate change. And not only that, but soils that are poor in carbon lose all of their essential functions. So they lose their fertility, their capacity to filter and retain water, etc. But now the good news is that we know how to reverse this cycle. So by using regenerative land management practices, so practices that regenerate soil health and rebuild soil organic matter, we have the opportunity to reverse the amplification of human-induced climate change while restoring biodiversity and replenishing and purifying our water supply, and even alleviating some political conflicts around the world, all of this while growing larger quantities of healthier foods. So how's that for a solution? And so 
This is one major part of the solution um, that we just cannot ignore. I do want to stress, though, that there are many other things that we need to do in our fight against climate change, and we absolutely need to drastically reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and transition away from the fossil fuel industry, that's for sure. But this is a crucial part of the solution, and we simply don't hear enough about it. It doesn't get nearly as much attention as it deserves. But the good news is that in the last few years, winds have started to turn, and we are seeing more and more examples of people starting to connect the dots around the world. The dots between soils, carbon, food security, and climate change. The 4 per 1000 initiative being one of the main examples of such a great way to make it tangible to a larger audience that we need to sequester more carbon in our soils. And we're really excited to say that you'll be hearing more about it tonight by Mr. Stefan de Fode himself. Another example, um, just in March, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization organized its first soil organic carbon global symposium. Uh, the Commonwealth of Nations, a few months ago, held its first regenerative development for, to reverse climate change conference in London urging its member states to turn to solutions that are putting carbon back in the ground. And just a few weeks ago, the Quebec government, in collaboration with the FAO, held an international symposium on food security and nutrition in the age of climate change. So all of these initiatives make me very hopeful, and they're, they're calling for a profound transformation of our food systems and of the way that we manage landscapes. But now a little bit more about our event, the Living Soil Symposium Montreal. Why did we put this on and why did we decide to do it this way? Well, so because soils touch upon so many different disciplines and because in our highly specialized society, we tend to end up working in our own bubble often, we thought it was really important to bring together all of the di different stakeholders whose work impacts soils in order to discuss solutions. So that's why this weekend you'll be hearing from not only scientists, but also agronomists and food producers, entrepreneurs and policymakers. We also wanted to get inspiration from some of the most innovative solutions that are being implemented around the world. Um, so that's why we have people presenting from all the, all the places in Canada, in the United States, France and Uruguay. So we believe this is how we create positive change, by building on the expertise that we already have from experts around the world, and by breaking bridges between disciplines in order to come up with solutions that take into account the reality of everyone involved. We also believe that the diversity of backgrounds of people in this audience will create opportunity for cross-pollination and networking between people of different sectors, which we hope will lead to fruitful collaboration. Also, we're presenting global solutions here, but we believe that actions must happen locally in, or in order to drive change. And we hope to inspire you to take action. I'm just gonna grab a little sip of water. So, local initiatives are, are crucial to drive change, and um, our team is a, is a great example of this. So, we're a team, a handful of civilians who didn't know each other a year ago, and who started from scratch with no funding, and in only nine to 10 months, we put, the, put this together. So we hope to show that you don't need a whole lot in order to make waves and stuff. that overcomes expectations of eco-responsibility for an initiative of our size and budget, we really hope to set the bar higher for the event industry and push other events to take responsibility for their carbon emissions. So a little bit more about this. So we decided to take measures in order to uh, create a, an eco-responsible event. So, uh, and we decided to be transparent about the process. So um, that's why we're undergoing the climate commitment certification with EcoCert Canada. 
which means that we're tracking all event-related emissions, uh, including those uh, incurred by our participants to come here, as you probably noticed by the very lengthy form on Eventbrite. Um, thanks for your understanding. And it also meant that yeah, we wanted to have a few internal policies to, to reduce our impact. So, um, I mean, among other things, you know, all paper-based materials are uh, printed on recycled paper, obviously. All of the name badges and lanyards are, have been borrowed and will be reused. Um, our lunches, catered by Vers la Bouche, will be vegan uh, and made from 80% local, local and organic ingredients, sorry. Uh, and will be served in compostable lunch boxes. So anyway, we have a few measures like this, and we'd be happy to talk about them with you at uh, on the mezzanine, where coffee breaks will happen. But still, all of these measures to try and reduce our impact didn't feel like enough, because let's face it, events have a massive carbon footprint, and especially ours. There's hundreds of people here, and people coming from all parts of the world. Um, so we're really excited to say that we decided to offset our carbon emissions by the installation of a food forest on a local farm here in Quebec uh, with the help of our partner, Propagate Ventures. Um, so this agroforestry system will sequester the equivalent uh, CO2 emitted by the event in the tree biomass and in the soil and will also help revitalize the fertility of the land and will provide the farmer with an additional source of income and food in the future. So we're really excited about this, and uh, yay! <laughs> so we're really excited about this, and we look forward to keeping you posted about the, the developments. Um, we're still in conversation with a few different landowners, and we hope to come to a decision by November as for where it will be installed. Um, and starting soil preparation in the spring of 2018. Now, the most important thing I need to do in this speech, there were so many different people and organizations who were absolutely crucial in putting this event together. And I just want to say that it's been a really hopeful and refreshing process to see just the diversity and the number of organizations who are willing to offer their support for living soils. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank our sponsors whose contributions truly made this event possible. So thank you for believing in us, despite the fact that we kind of emerged from nowhere, and thanks for supporting this cause and helping spread the word about living soils. So first, I'd like to thank La Ferme des Quatre Temps, who's been supporting us since the beginning and who were a major help in getting the initiative up on its feet. Thank you to l'Ambassade de France au Canada et l'Institut Français, thanks to whom this event is being simultaneously translated and who helped bring Mr. Stéphane Le here as well. Thank you to the Concordia Sustainability Action Fund, who is offering everybody a delicious um, fair trade coffee. So the coffee breaks catered by the Hive Co-op uh, and who are also contributing to our carbon offset project. I want to thank warmly Regeneration International for contributing to bringing so many speakers who are here with us this weekend. Thank you to the Quebec government also for the generous support. I want to thank our sponsors Nutiva, Inocupor, Earth Alive Clean Technologies, Edo Capital, Propagate Ventures, and Delilah. Thank you so much for the support. I also want to thank all of our in-kind sponsors who donated organic products uh, for the event, including uh, many of the snacks you might have tasted on the mezzanine tonight, uh, and also Annie Lord Artis Floral uh, for the flower arrangements that you would have seen at registration that are, by the way, harvested from the woods. And uh, thank you to Briley Farms, which is a local farm in Quebec here in Outaouais, for providing regenerative grass fed beef. I want to thank also the Innovation program, um, which has made this event possible. Um, so I'll say this in French because I have not taken the time to translate it. Um, donc, ce projet a été réalisé grâce à une aide financière du programme Innovation Agroalimentaire, qui est issu de l'accord du cadre Cultivons l'avenir 2 entre le ministère de l'Agriculture, des Pêcheries et de l'Alimentation du Québec et Agriculture et Agroalimentaire Canada. Vous avez été une grande aide pour cet événement. Merci. 
I want to thank our production partners as well, who were essential in producing this event. Um, so first, thank you to Soil for Climate, who were the originators for me, who were kind of the people who brought me into this movement and connected many of us. <laughs> thank you to Regeneration International uh, for such key support that you offered for this event and for helping drive the initiative. Thank you to Ductag for being our main living soils expert. Thank you to the Concordia University uh, Department of Geography, Planning and Environment for backing your event. And thank you to the 4 per 1000 initiative for endorsing an event, our event since the beginnings and for being present here this weekend. Our promotional partners, who were organizations that helped us spread the word about the event. Thanks so much. Thank you to our advisory scientific committee, um, who helped guide us in building the program. So thanks for taking the time to give us precious, informed advice. Thanks Denis Angers, Joanne Whelan, Odette Ménard, Marc Lucotte, Timothy LaSalle, Derek Lynch, Benoît Lambert et Anne Blondelot, merci. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart all of the speakers who joined us here this weekend. You truly are the heart of this event, and we're honored to have you here to present in Montreal. Thank you to the MCs as well for joining us. Um, thanks to our wonderful team of volunteers who are um, generously helping us this weekend. Look out for the Earthy Red t-shirts if you're looking for a volunteer, which by the way, were made here in Montreal from organic cotton by Delilah. Thank you. <laughs> Some people were instrumental in getting us up on our feet in the beginning, um, so I want to thank Charles Jean Jean Bergeron for planting the idea in my brain to organize this event in the first place and for being such a great connector. Um, thank you Monica Furl and Sébastien Archambault for all the motivation and support in the beginnings. And thank you Cameron Stiff for generously advising us along the way. I want to thank my parents, um, <laughs> because without your help and support, I would not have been able to commit myself full-time to, to this project for a year as a volunteer, um, and the event would simply not have been the same. Um, <laughs> to thank a really special bunch of ladies. Oh, no, this is starting already. Um, yeah, so some of the most dedicated and inspiring women out there. Um, and yes, if you were wondering, our team is comprised of 100% women, not because we discriminated, <laughs> but whether this is a coincidence or not, um, at this day and age, as we're starting to acknowledge more and more the key role of women at the forefront of this fight against climate change and food insecurity. I'm especially proud to say that I've been surrounded by such a passionate, strong, and beautiful team of ladies. So thank you, Erica Groom. <laughs> thank you, Corinne Bolduc. Thanks, Vivian Kaloxilos. Thanks, Alex Groom. And thank you, Hannah Brown. This has been an amazing and it's largely thanks to you. And last but not least, I want to thank all of you participants for taking the time to come here this weekend and learn and share and connect. You are the reason why we did this, and it's so heartwarming to see you came in such great numbers. Um, so, thank you so much. And the good news is, this is not over. Um, so it's not over after this weekend, it's only the beginning. Because, as we saw the proportions that the symposium took, we especially didn't want this to be a one-off. Um, we wanted to keep nurturing this network that we will have created and keep building on it. Um, so I'm very excited to say, well, to introduce you to... It works, yay! <laughs> so 
we founded a nonprofit to pursue the mission of the event after October 15th. Um, so with the mission of facilitating the implementation of regenerative practices by keeping on building this network of this interdisciplinary network um, by organizing events and by doing more uh, projects on the ground with farmers like our carbon offset project and probably way more things that still need to be determined. We're still new. Um, and that's why we would love you to stay involved in this conversation. So if you're interested in keeping informed, uh, I would urge you to go on our website and sign up to our newsletter um, because it's, with, it's by keeping people like you involved that this initiative will be a success. So, and yeah, because people like you in this room and I, it's with small groups of motiv motivated people like us that we can change things, so let's do it together. So thank you so much. And enjoy the rest.